If a hurricane were to hit the city of Suffolk, would you be prepared? We're talking about preparation on today's show. Joined now by Richard Stevens, the Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator with the City of Suffolk and the Fire and Rescue Department to talk about hurricane season. So Richard, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So we, every hurricane season has its own different uh, trends and obviously w predictions say one thing, but the season plays out another to the good or to the bad. We always hope it's to the good. But for 2022, what at this stage of the game are the experts saying we could maybe expect for this coming hurricane season? Yeah, well, currently they're saying that there's going to be 19 named storms, nine of which are would be hurricanes, and four which would be major hurricanes, which is category three or above. But the important takeaway from that is it only takes one. That's right. Uh, no matter if they predict 100 or, or two, if one hits the city of Suffolk, mm -hmm. then that's going to certainly affect us in a, a, a way that we need to respond to. Now, when you talk about the 19 overall storms they're talking about, is that just in the Atlantic? Because I know sometimes we have them in the Pacific or other areas, and we're not saying 19 are coming to the city of Suffolk or 19 are necessarily going to hit the eastern seaboard. It could also come up as far as the, the Gulf Coast or areas like that too, right? Correct. It right. is the Atlantic hurricane prediction. Got it. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with, the zone over there. And I know, um, you know, we haven't had a, a serious hit in, in quite some time, but again, as you do, I know, knock on the table, you you look for that wood quicker than I get the <laughs> sentence out of my mouth. But um, as you said, it only takes one to make a hurricane season memorable for really the wrong reason. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a hurricane. It can simply be a tropical storm. Mm -hmm. uh, so the tropical storms can spin up tornadoes and flooding and, right. and other events too that can affect the area. So it, it doesn't have to be a hurricane. Gotcha. Now, what kind of training, I know obviously you're always going through to conferences and things like that related to this topic. So again, that you're up to date so that you could be briefing uh, city management and getting everything together in that aspect. But I mean, the training that goes into that, I mean, what kind of things are you getting out of that as far as to bring back to us here? Well, the, the training is a, a wider range of, of, of things. Sure. Uh, dealing with uh, government assistance, whether it's from the state government or whether it's from FEMA. Right. Um, staying up to date on different things that are offered in, in those respects. Mm -hmm to assist the city of Suffolk and the, the citizens and businesses. Exactly, exactly. And of course, making sure that we know what to do when those things happen and, you know, again, what agencies to connect with and again, the paperwork that comes with it and getting all right. that squared away to make sure people are getting the assistance or have the assistance available for them to apply or whatever the circumstances would be. So it's sure. extremely important. Um, so we talk about hurricanes as well. One of the things I know we like to focus on is preparedness. And Correct. I think that's really the, the crux to what we're talking about today. Making sure people that are aware that, you know, hurricane season June 1st through November 30th. Mm -hmm. um, and people think, well, November is a little late, but they can pop up as far as during that time, again, based on the weather conditions and things. Right, and they can, can come sooner. It's true. Yeah, yeah, well, it, so. it doesn't stick between the boundaries that we set it up, does Correct. it? Correct. That's right. So the time to start preparing is now. now. And when we talk about preparations, what are some of the things that you would recommend for the, the average homeowner or business owner to be considering at this stage? Well, your basic kit consists of your basic needs. Mm -hmm. uh, water, they recommend uh, one gallon of water per person per day, and they recommend a minimum of three days supply. And that goes along with uh, dry foods and canned goods and things of that nature. Uh, your basic kit, you wanna have flashlight and batteries. You wanna have a weather radio uh, with batteries or wind up crank, whichever one works best for you. Right. Uh, and just your, to supply your basic needs, toiletry, sanitation items, things of that nature. Um, but you can also make the kit uh, cater to yourself, your specifics. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your medicines supplied, or at least a list of your medicines that you're currently on. Right. Uh, you want to take that to the shelter if you, if you have to evacuate. Um, and you also want to have uh, maybe some comfort things, maybe a couple candy bars or board games if you have kids or grandkids and things of that nature, bedding uh, to make you more comfortable. Uh, anything you can think of that would make your stay away from home mm -hmm. more comfortable okay. and help you get through a, a bad situation. And people maybe who haven't, who've already prepared a kit in years past, this is a good time to go through the kit to see if anything's expired or possibly maybe it's, somebody used it and you didn't realize it hadn't been replaced. So again, it's not just building it, it's also maintaining maybe what people have already done, correct? Correct, yeah, you wanna make sure your batteries are still good, your flashlight, radio still work, any food is hasn't expired, mm -hmm. uh, and things of that nature. Um, also along with the emergency kit comes a communication plan. If your family gets separated, how will you contact each other? 
uh, phones that are down in the area. Could you use Twitter? Could you use Facebook? Just to make sure that your family's accounted for. So. And with the emergency, your, your kit, um, I know one of the recommendations other than the items that go in it is a, a waterproof container, correct? Yeah, you want to have a waterproof container or something you can carry with you, something right. that's easy to carry, correct. carry with you. Um, and, uh, along with your kit, if you have animals or pets, you want to make sure they're taken care of as right. well. Um, if you have to evacuate with your pet, we do have a pet-friendly shelter, Nansen River High School, if that opens up. Right. And along with our other two uh, high schools, which are shelters. Right. Uh, Kings Fort being our quote-unquote medical shelter. Got it. Fully generated, uh, where you can hook up oxygen or whatever may be needed. Mm -hmm. And then Lakeland as well, high school is a evacuation shelter, if, if it's open. Got it. And of course, in the event that uh, the shelters would be open, we'd be sharing information on our social media outlets, through our mass communication system and other methods to make sure people know these, these are open. And certainly if it's a, it's a really mass event, um, if they're full, because again, they have limitations on the amount of people that can be handled at these locations, which again, why we have different ones in different parts of the city. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You bring up a good point. Uh, you want to stay tuned to the news, stay tuned to the weather stations mm -hmm. to keep abreast of where the storm is, if it's one out there and, and where it possibly may be headed to. Mm -hmm. That's true. So. So again, being aware of kind of what's going on and making sure, like you said, very important, if you are evacuating and things get hectic, you can get separated or just knowing where to meet. It's kind of like, again, your evacuation plan from your home in the event of a fire. You want everybody to have a central location to go to here, more central means of communication in the event, like you said, phone lines are down or whatever, you still want to have a way to do that. And preparing right. ahead of time is always the best way to do it, right? Yeah, and speaking of evacuations, um, there's, there's different ways you can evacuate. You can evacuate out of the area, and then you want to have a meeting place so your family knows where you're going, whether it's a relative, whether it's a friend's house, whatever the case may be. If you're evacuating out of the area, you want your family to know that. If you have to evacuate in just your house and stay in the area, if a shelter's open, that's fine too. But we have the Know Your Zone program now here in Virginia. Correct. Correct. You can go to knowyourzoneva.org, mm -hmm. type in your address, and it'll tell you if you're in a tidal flood zone, either A, B, or C, or D. Uh, you may not be in a flood zone, but if you're close to the Nansman River or body of tidal water, then you could be in a zone. Right and it's important to know that. Right, and knowing your zone, of course, is important because of the fact, correct me if I'm wrong, if the governor makes a declaration and declares that we need to evacuate zone B or C or whatever, then you know where you are and that definitely affects you without you having to go back and check, wait a minute, is that, am I here or there? If you know ahead of time, then you know that letter, right? Correct, and if, if for example, if the governor gives a zone A evacuation, you can simply go to a zone C or right. D, you don't have to leave the area, you can go to, uh, uh, person's house somewhere in the city mm -hmm. if they're not in a flood zone and, right. and hopefully be safe. Now, as far as with your office I mean, throughout the year, not just in hurricane season, um, I know so y'all have some resources that people can, can tap into, but I mean, when, what, what are the typical things that people are calling the emergency management division to, to talk about? I mean, what kind of <laughs> things happen over, you laugh, but I mean, I know you probably have some stories to tell, but I mean, basically, what is some of the information or the calls that you get on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we get calls for a wide range of, of, of topics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, emergency management doesn't just hurricane season, right. but it's also dealing with active threats or hazardous material incidents, right. large scale uh, fires, we work with the Red Cross and other volunteer agencies. Right. Um, we get calls all the time to come out and do some public speaking sure. on, her, on hurricane safety and other safety in the area. So stay pretty busy. Yeah. And of course, this time of year, as we said off the top, it only takes one storm. But I think just being aware that we're in hurricane season, thinking about your own individual needs and again, preparing that evacuation kit should you need it, um, knowing what zone you're in. Um, being aware of where you would go in the event that you are going to evacuate the area, mm -hmm. let alone go to another zone and maybe where in that zone you would go to, again, like you said, a friend or a relative's house or whatever accommodations you're going to make. And I guess just laying the groundwork so if in the event that something happens, in generally stressful situations in, mm -hmm. you already have that game plan, that, that playbook, so to speak, that you can refer back to and run through and you know exactly what to do. Right, yeah, and, and you brought up a good, another good point is it's not just hurricane season. It can be a snowstorm or ice storm where electricity goes out. It could be uh, tornadoes. We've had tornadoes in the area. Yes. Uh, so your emergency preparedness kit needs to stay fresh and ready to go year round. It's right. not just during hurricane season. We just choose this to highlight it because it's that time of year. Right. And when we talk about emergency preparations here in the city of Suffolk, you know, our emergency operations center is located at, on Kings Fork Road at uh, fire headquarters and of course also home to Fire Station 6 mm -hmm. as far as in that facility. And when, if the EOC, as we refer to it, is opened, 
Um, what resources are there for city management and, and the, the public safety partners that we have as far as within the city of Suffolk and the area? What resources are there and how is that facility utilized in such a situation? Well, the Emergency Operations Center or the EOC uh, gives the leadership, city leadership, a place to go and be able to command and control, so to speak, um, during a major event. It does, like I said, it doesn't have to necessarily be a hurricane. Uh, beginning of the COVID-19 response, uh, tornado response, the EOC could be open and activated then. Sure. Uh, it gives leadership the opportunity to be able to speak across the room to each other in a safe environment, in a secure environment, to handle any emergencies that the citizens may experience, our businesses or so forth. And when leadership, everybody from the police department, fire department, public works, public utilities, media and community relations, all the departments, I hate to leave everybody out, but I can't name them all, but they come down yeah. there and, yeah. and, and give opportunity to get the city through such a, a negative event if it's happening. So. And, and I know it's very helpful, again, to have every, all the, everybody there. So again, if you're trying to connect with someone, you've got a you, direct connection right there, and it's a good way to kind of pull everybody together to make that happen. I know a lot of times we have maybe smaller events where we activate what we call a virtual EOC mm -hmm. and we're doing it via phone or via computer or whatever the case would be. But in those instances, you got to get all the players in the same room to kind of make sure we're making the decisions we need to make to keep the city safe and get us moving forward through that emergency. Correct. And it also has uh, the ability to contact the Virginia Department of Emergency Management, state resources, as well as uh, FEMA if necessary, FEMA Region 3. Exactly. So again, you know, the state and regional and federal partners that we have to work with in the event that we have a disaster right. that would rise to the level that we have to key into those resources that they can provide to help us kind of you know, get through that type of situation. So um, as we close up today, I want to give you one more opportunity to make your sales pitch, so to speak, as far as to residents about what they need to be thinking about. I know we're taping this in late May, mm -hmm. but again, hurricane season can be, well, hurricanes can pop up any time theoretically, but you know, June 1st is kind of our target deadline, so to speak, to kind of be ready to go. But what would you offer to someone as we kind of close out today's program? That just simply that the time to prepare is now. Yep. It only takes one. It doesn't, don't, you, it's fun to pay attention to predictions and what might happen, what might not happen, but if you're prepared, then it doesn't matter. Um, and the more you're prepared, the easier it is on the city's response too. If you can take care of yourself for, for a brief period of time with water, food, things of that nature, it, it helps the city out as far as getting back to normal operations. So the time to prepare is now. Got it. A uh, very simple message, but very important message to get across to people, again, about what you need to be considering, again, as we enter hurricane season 2022, and really year-round, given, given the nature of emergencies and, and weather impacts and things that we have over the course of the year uh, that we know about, and then there's the things we don't know about. You still, again, want to be ready for that and be prepared, as you said. Correct. Yes, sir. Very good. Richard, thank you for your time today. Thank you. And everything that you do to kind of keep us uh, organized, informed, and safe here in the city of Suffolk through the Department of Mer Division of Merchant Management. Yes, sir. Thank you, Richard. That would do it for this edition of Safety First. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. We will see you next time.